Well, good evening, Mountainside. Praise God for the rain. What a blessing it has been uh, several weeks now, off and on. I know everybody's receiving different amounts, but we'll take whatever we whatever we can get. God is blessing us greatly. Hey, this past Sunday, if you were here, uh, then you know Roman and Johanna and little Timco are here. And what a blessing it was to see them. What a blessing to hear Roman share about the work, you know, on the other side of the world. And it's been difficult for them with the COVID challenges, but God is good. And they've made some adjustments and God just continues to bless it. Uh, so uh, our God is so much bigger than anything the world can can throw at us. But uh, they'll be back with us on August the 8th. And Roman will be preaching from the pulpit that Sunday. So mark that one down on your calendars. You don't want to miss that. This past Thursday, I had to travel to Clovis. Most of you know I've been batching it for about a week and a half, and I was ready for Vera to be home. She was ready to get home, and she'd been blessed to travel with our son and daughter-in-law and, and the three boys uh, to San Angelo for a family reunion. And uh, so I had to go pick her up. And those trips to Clovis, you know, they're, uh, they're somewhat monotonous. I mean, after all, I've made the trip was counting the other day about two million times and of course i'm exaggerating but i've made the trip quite a few times in fact i know every dip every bump on the road i know every hill every valley and uh but i love new mexico i love to drive i love to be out in the, the countryside and it doesn't matter in our state which direction you go it's absolutely beautiful and it's different just about any direction you go but when you go to clovis you have to know the dominant color of the landscape, uh, it's basically light brown and tan with a scrubby tree here and there. Uh, but after all, New Mexico is high desert, so that's just the way that it is. But when you make the trip, though, as often as, as Vera and I do, there'll be at least two times a year that you'll make the trip that things are just different. And it was different this past Thursday. The dominant color was green. And it was everywhere. There was water in all the low-lying areas. And the natural grasses were just plush. They looked so good with, with growth. And it was absolutely beautiful. And we all know why. When God sends his rain, it truly brings life to the landscape. It's life that was, was there the whole time. It was just simply dormant, waiting, waiting on God to bring what only he can bring to life. Oh, we serve a mighty God. And that's how it is in Jesus Christ. Everyone, every human being has kingdom potential, but it requires two simple actions in order for that potential to blossom. And the first action comes from you and I as individuals. We have to each choose, choose for ourselves to accept Jesus Christ as our Savior. And when you give your life to Christ, things do change. You change, and that change is the second action, and it comes from God. And some, you know, some are warm to the idea of such a shift in life, while so others are they're apprehensive because they don't know quite what to expect, or maybe they just don't want it at all. But new Christians find, however, that new life in Christ results in changes that they wanted to make all along, but just weren't able to do so without God's help. And they also find just more blessing, but just a greater sense of peace, unlike any other and a renewed sense of purpose for living, period. And that's just the short list. The decision to accept Christ is the most important decision anyone will ever make, and it cannot be, it cannot be taken lightly. God has given us an important manual for life, and that is His Word, the Bible. I mean, He's the author of this book, and He's given us significant, truthful insights for how we can have this joy, this hope, this peace in life. He has the answers to the problems and the emptiness that we face as human beings in a fallen world. Now, you are here. I am here for a purpose. It's not accident that we're here. But we were separated from God because of sin from the very beginning of the world until God intervened. You see, God sent his son, Jesus Christ. He lived on this earth as a human being. He suffered cruel, unbelievable punishment, and he died on a cross to pay for our sins. And then, praise God, three days later, he rose from the dead. And this is how we know that Jesus loves us so much and he desires to have a personal relationship with each of us. But remember, 
Our sin separates us from Him. Romans 3.32 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And this is why the most important decision in life is whether or not one accepts Jesus as their Savior, their Lord and Savior. And no one can make this choice for you. Everyone makes their choice, their own choice, personal choice for this new life. Jesus called it in John chapter 10, he called it life to the full. And to make this choice is to choose forgiveness and a life-changing relationship with God. And this begins, obviously, with repentance. We have to repent. We have to be willing to turn away from sin and the old life to this new life that comes only through and in Jesus Christ. God so wants all humanity to make this choice. Peter reminded us of this. He said, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. 2 Peter chapter 3. We have our first actual life example of this taking place in Acts chapter 2. Peter and all the apostles, if you remember, for quite a while, they had been hiding in fear, absolute fear for their lives after Christ's crucifixion. And then, just as Jesus promised, the Holy Spirit came upon them and they were changed, changed forever. They feared no more. And immediately they had life like they had never experienced it. They were beginning to have life to the full. And they leave that place where they had been hiding and they, with no hesitation, they begin to speak very boldly of their Savior, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Peter's message is recorded as he gives his fellow Jews basically a history lesson. And then he ties Jesus into the story. And this is the same Jesus that they had just crucified. This is the basically the first presentation of the gospel, the good news of Jesus. And when he's through, the people cry out in shame, in guilt, because they realize what they had done. And they cried out, what shall we do? And Peter replied, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is for you and your children and for all who are afar off. That's us, for all whom the Lord our God will call. You see, that early church was full of new life, and it was changing the world. And we're benefactors of that new life today. What would change if we truly lived our lives with this new life as we go out into the world each and every day? See, that's a choice we have to make. And I tell you what would happen. I know what would happen. The world around us would sit up and take notice. They'd see the change. And if we'll make this choice, we have to know God will equip us to do the rest. We can make a difference because of who works in us. Praise God. Hey, thank you for tuning in uh, this evening. And remember, remember whose you are. Remember who's in you as you go out the rest of this week and make a difference out there. Thank you and God bless.